from here be simple. Um, all right, so we're supposed to evaluate this power, and we're going to get negative 10,000. So we're going to get negative 10 times 10. One with four zeros, so that's going to be ten thousand, and ten is your negative. Okay, so what could you? I mean, other than multiplying ten times ten times ten times ten incorrectly, what's a mistake that you might make? You could think it was supposed to be positive. You could think it was supposed to be positive because you would think maybe that you're supposed to take this number and take it to the fourth power. And again, this is a matter of an agreement that we've made. It's not that mathematically it's incorrect to think that you would do that. It's just that we've agreed that if, if somebody wants you to do that, they'll put parentheses around that whole thing. Just an agreement, not right and wrong, just that's, that's how we do that on the regular. Okay. So for number 19, um, it says evaluate. What does it, it mean to evaluate an expression for the given value? Well, we should talk about that word solve. Um, what does it look like? What do you do in this case? What does it look like you solving it? Let's just say you solve it. What do you do? What is the, what's the process? You put 10 yeah, you just put 10 for j. So 5 times j becomes 5 times 10, minus 3 times j becomes 3 times 10 times 5. OK? And again, the agreement that we made, PEMDAS, written a little more like this. That's how we will proceed. That's how the book would proceed. That's just how we're going to agree to do it. We're going to agree not to, say, subtract the 3 from this 10 and then proceed from there. Right, we're going to agree that what comes first? Multiply. We'll multiply first. So we'll do all the multiplication first. Um, there's not even any division to make this complicated at all. We'll just multiply these together, 50. Multiply these together, so minus 30. Uh, we still have some multiplying to do. 5, so almost done. 50 minus 150. And now the multiplication has been done, and we'll do the subtraction now, negative 100. Okay? Fairly basic algebra stuff, just plugging in a number in for a variable. That's the basic idea of what algebra is. Just a, num a letter representing a number. Okay. Are there any questions about that at all? Okay? J represents a number. Wherever you see J, you plug in that number. Okay, same thing here. We're gonna put, oh, I was gonna talk about uh, solving. Okay, solving is a common word people use. They use it in this uh, instance. Solve this, okay? Solve, though, is, is specific towards an equation where one side has unknowns and the other side doesn't, and then you figure out what that number has to be. Okay. It's something like 5x minus 2 equals 18. Um, so when we come to this equation and we figure out what x has to be, we solve for x. Okay? So this process right here is really just called evaluating. Um, so don't overuse the word solve. Solving uh, is for some kind of a problem that has a solution. This doesn't have any solution, it just has you know, the outcome. So we're just going to put negative 1 in there for x, okay? Um, just being careful to put negative 1 in the exact position of x. So that if x is negative, we're squaring the negative, or we're cubing the negative, or we're taking the negative to the fourth power, 
Um, I put this one in here um, just to see how comfortable you were with it. And you got the even power and the odd power. Um, and this one should come out to be positive. This one, this part should come out to be negative. Just want to make sure that happens. So um, negative one to the fourth. What does it mean when you take something to the fourth power? Times by itself four times. Right, times by itself four times. You know, negative one times negative one times negative one times negative one is just positive one, two. What's uh, negative one to the third? One, you multiply by itself three times, you're gonna have a negative one. Negative four times negative one, positive four, six. Okay. Simplify the expression, or we could say, what's another way to say that? Talked about it last class. Simplify means like I might want to put this with this. Putting together like terms. Sure, let's combine, combine like terms. Okay. So, well, before we, you could put these together right now if you wanted to, right? We could use the commutative property of addition, we could put this guy over there and this guy second and uh, put the four P squared with the negative 9p squared, or we could come over here and we could do what here? Distribute. Distribute. Or we could do both at the same time. If I combine 4p squared with negative 9p squared, what will I get? Negative 5p squared. Um, and then we'll leave minus 12p. It doesn't have any like terms quite yet. We'll distribute the 3. So we get what? What do we get? We distribute that 3. 12p. Plus 3. Good. Don't forget to take the 3 all the way through, multiply it by 7. So we have negative 5p squared. Can I put these together? Why can I put these together? What is it that makes these like terms? P, p right? It's not a p and an r. So they've got the same variable, so they represent the same number. And what else? The exponent. What is the exponent of this p? One. The exponent of one. So we can put these together. Negative twelve p plus twelve p cancels out. Cancels out. So we have zero p plus twenty one. So we collect the like terms. That's what we asked. And um, so now we just have an expression that has two variables. Four cubed plus five times y. Y is negative three. We've agreed to do multiplication first so that we don't have to overuse parentheses like that. So you multiply five times negative three first, you get negative fifteen. Four to the third, what's four to the third? Sixty-four. Plus a negative fifteen. Is there any problem? I mean, look, we've got exponents here and then multiplication. Can I multiply these together and do that exponent at the same time? Is that a problem? No. I mean, you couldn't really do, I actually did multiplication first and then exponents. Is that a violation of PEMDAS? Multiplication and each other. Right, they're not interacting with you. The multiplied thing is over here and the exponent thing is over here. And we haven't tried to put them together yet. So it would all be the same. Questions about anything here? How was the homework? Fun. 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 <laughs> Fun with evil glares all the time. Uh, to make Gordon feel neglected. Huh? <laughs> you, you are making Gordon feel weird really now. Stop. <laughs> How long have you guys been in school together? Too long? Too, too long. So I get a feeling. Gordon fears Jessica. Huh? Gordon fears Jessica. It's like you're in a good part of the class for that. 
over there. Over here, you're over there, here and there, good places. Okay, so the homework was too bit, not too bad. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions for the homework that didn't get answered by looking at this quiz? Well, I have a question about the homework. Is it a real question? Yes. A real question that I would say is a real question. Yes. Not Gordon. What about Jessica? Would she say it's a real question? If, if Tristan said it yes, if I said it no. I don't actually think about it that much. So. See, she's not biased. All right, let's, let's give it a shot. Let's see what you got. I was going to ask if like, we turn it in directly to you, if there's like some kind of box that we turn it in. So at this time, now is the time when we hand it in. Okay, and we'll just pass it in this way. I already have a bunch because people put it in the box. Like Simple three. misunderstanding, okay? But now we know that once the, this is over, once the explanation of the quiz is over, then the homework comes this way. We'll ask the explanation of the quiz and maybe any more extra questions. Does that count as a question? Are you limited <laughs> in some way? How many questions are you allowed to ask? No, does that count as like a real question? Uh, sure. Question. One that I was already going to answer, but yeah. It wasn't really about the homework. Well, it's how we turn in the homework. I guess so. So, because if we couldn't turn in a homework, then there's not really a and you get credit for it. Okay. Also, I should be seeing these from you. If you don't have your homework for any reason whatsoever, good or bad reason, you should be getting this from you if you don't have your homework to turn into your right hand. Okay, so I have a couple. One more coming. Um, also, for the future, I just want to point something out right now. Uh, so we all pass our homework this way, right? I picked it up. Okay, so this is what I do with it next. I put it right here. Okay, put it in this folder. And I put this folder right here under my desk. All right, so did I get your homework? Mm -hmm. How could I not have your homework? Your dog is my dog didn't move. If you turned in your homework just now, if you did turn in your homework on the day that it was due, and I don't have it, how could that happen? It fell on the floor. Mm -hmm. no, it fell on the floor. That seems like maybe the one way that that could happen. My, but here's my thing. I have students come to me and say, I know I turned that in. You got a zero. Well, if you turned it in, it got to me and I put it right there. Right? So if you have a zero, you could have overlooked it. I guess I'm entering them. You could have overlooked it. Um, so then it would be back there where I hand it back. Could be no name, or it could be that you just didn't turn it in. Okay. So if you're so sure that you turned it in at some point in the future, be ready to explain to me you know, what happened to it. Where is it? That's all I wanted to bring up. Right? It happened quite a few times in this audience. Let's draw your attention to that. Okay. How's it going today? Slow. No, I'm doing good. Doing good? Yeah. Well, the person doing good. Gordon's always doing good. Right? Gordon? Always doing good? Not really. No. Not really? No. Getting those text reminders? Yeah. How are they working? Who's not getting them? Did you sign up for it? What? The text reminders? I think so. You did or you didn't? I don't know. You don't know? Are you getting them? No. Okay. So probably not. Probably not. So uh, are those helpful? You like those? Yeah. Okay. So there you go. People seem to like it. So if you want to ask me after class, I can show you real quick how to do it. OK. Um, is anybody looking at the, the lectures? Not that there's a lot to see yet. OK, so hopefully people will use that in the future. So let's look at 1.3. 
together. Me and you. Seen one of these before? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, what is it? It's a scale. It's a scale. Okay. And how does the scale work? It how? If I compare it to something else. Okay. So I'd have a something else and I put it here. Right? And what do I put on the other side? Whatever you want to find out. Whatever you want to weigh. Right. So maybe I have a orange and then I have weights that I know how much they weigh. And then I put them over here, and then okay. So I'm putting weights over here, and then what do I what do I stop? So it's level, uh, some kind of some funny grade scale. But when it's when this part is pointing straight up and down, or when this is perfectly flat, then you know this side and this side are the same. Okay. What happens when they're, they're right down are the same, right? So if I push something here. Now, what would we say about the scale? Unbalanced. Unbalanced. Okay? If I were to lift up on this side, we'd say they're unbalanced. Okay. So, okay, let's I'll introduce you to my extra credit. Okay? By asking somebody to come up and explain how this is like an equation and what I just displayed about. If I just put something on this side, it's unbalanced. And what that tells us about like, the basics of solving an equation. You guys have solved basic equations. Let me put a, a simple one up here. So, who wants to take a stab at it? Yes. Um, it's like the equation because if you do one sign, one thing to one side of the equal sign, you have to do it to the other side. Otherwise Right. You, if I push something, you know, put something on this one side only, right? If I add three to both sides, or not both sides, just this side, well, it's unbalanced. You can't just add three, you cancel out three like you probably know you should, and get x equal to <coughs> two, right? Because, well, it violates the truth that we knew at the beginning. We were given the truth that x minus three is two, so if we just add three to one side, then this is what we've done. We put a big three weight on this side, and nothing on the other side is unbalanced. Okay, and that's when we're solving equations, simple or difficult. That's the main thing we have to remember, and don't remember it as a rule. Same thing to both sides. People have that stuck in their heads; they remember it, but they, the conception of it, they haven't fully soaked it in. Okay. So I like to bring this out as a visual so that in the future, if you start to do something and it's unbalanced, I'll just say, look, you're, you're making one side of this, this equation not equal to the other side. And that's the reason why we do things to both sides, not because some teacher told us one time to do the same thing to both sides, but because right now, both sides are equal. That's just the way it started out, whether it represents a real life thing or just an arbitrary equation. Right now, both sides are equal and we have to maintain that equality. Okay? So this is how I do extra credit. Let me pick out of here. And then you can get one, two, five, or ten, depending on the color you have. Okay, it's real complicated. Blacks and blues and fewer yellows and reds. Okay, so write that down. Okay, so we're ready as we approach each question. 
equation we're going to what? Make sure it's balanced. Make sure it's balanced. That's all we're doing. Right? Not a mantra of same thing for both sides. Um, but keeping the equation balanced, and you've got to do the same thing on both sides. If I add five pounds on one side, I can add five pounds to the other side. That's why we do it. Not just because we're canceling out, well, a three. We're not even just really canceling out the three. Mm -hmm. right? We're putting a positive three on the side, and negative three plus three is? Zero. And x plus zero is? Is x, OK? But we can't add a 3 to this side and not do it to this side, because then we'd have this unbalanced equation. Okay. So x equals 5, and the x equals 5. Okay. So what we're really taking advantage of is, a, is a, some technical stuff where x minus 3 plus 3 is really 0, and x plus 0 is x because zero is this thing called the um, additive identity, which means that when you add it to something else, it doesn't change anything. But I think we've gotten to the point where we understand that x plus zero is x, or if I just add negative three and three, I'm gonna wind up with x. Same with um, five x, we divide that by five. What we're really doing is multiplying five fifths by x, x over one if you like, and 5 over 5 is what? 1. one. And so we have 1 times x, which is just x. Those are the things we're really doing. Um, we don't have to write all the steps down every time, but we don't want to lose sight of that, that fact. That is what we're doing. Okay. That's what you call a one-step equation. And the, the thing that math books do sometimes, if you look on page 18, um, it's not my favorite thing. Um, sometimes they take things that are pretty clear and obvious to you, and they restate it in these, in these rule type ways that make you feel like it's too complicated for you to just understand. You have to know these rules or these properties. Um, so the, ad, the addition property of equality adds the same number to each side, um, and both sides are the same. Well, if we know that both sides are equal to start with, of course if we add whatever to both sides, it's still going to be the same thing. One side is going to be five more, and so is the other side, and two things that are equal are also going to be equal to each other if you add five to them on both sides. Okay. Um, to break that down into addition property and subtraction property and multiplication property and division property makes it sound like there's this complicated field of rules and properties and guidelines and things like that where it's pretty clear. You see what I'm saying? I don't love math books. I love math at all. You guys tired? Bored? Is it more big? I'm pretty bored. This is stuff you've probably done before. me a what and I say a duck and you have him a duck and then you say ask a question like is it yellow? So you say is it yellow and I say of course it's yellow. Okay let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was nice.
Um, okay. Well, let's try. I'm just gonna give you a problem or two to do here. Um, number five. This is in 1.3. So you should have your books. Number five and number seven. <clears throat> well, number five and number ten. I changed it to 10. I did say 7 at first, but I, I changed it to 10. Because 10 is going to be on the homework. So let's go ahead and knock it out now. Do I need to write that? Let me um, ask you a question. Can I add five to both sides? Good. Yes, I could. Uh, could I multiply both sides by five? Yes. Yeah. Do anything I want. Yeah. As long as it's balanced. What? It's balanced. As long as it's balanced. As long as I'm doing the same thing to both sides. Okay. There's lots of things that we could do. Um, so. Here's the thing about as we get more complicated problems throughout the year. I'm going to let you do whatever you think to do to an equation. I'm not going to sit down and remind you the exact way that I solved it. Okay? I've had many people solve equations through a roundabout process that I wouldn't have done but got them there. And then maybe I'll show you a faster way and then you'll see how some of the steps that you might have taken were extra. So I, I could add uh, 3 to both sides if I wanted to, and negative 13 plus 3 is still negative 10, here we're at 2. Okay. Well, that didn't quite get me all the way, so I'll add 10 to both sides. Z, negative 10 plus 10 is nothing, so I'm not going to add anything to Z, Z is just all by itself now on this side. And that might seem silly to, to do it in that many steps, but we may work together on an equation, and you do something that, after you see how simple it could be, seems, you know, what you did seems kind of roundabout. You might subtract 2t from this side, and, and subtract 2t from that side, and then you move all the t's over to the other side, when, why don't you just move them over to the other side in the first place, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm gonna let you do that. I'm gonna let you take a long way around, uh, I think I know that that's more helpful to you than just saying, oh, don't do that. That's going to take too long. Let's do it this way. Okay, so I'm going to let you explore and uh, kind of just feel around and figure out what winds up being the most efficient path. trying to do here. Well, we don't know what k is, but we do know that uh, a negative 16 times whatever k is, 
is equal to negative 8. We do know something that is 16 times bigger than k and the opposite. The opposite of 16 times bigger than k. Okay. So if we have thing, this thing that's 16 times bigger than k, then we're going to want to find 1 16th of that. Find right? a 16th of something that's 16 times bigger than we want. Uh, and if it's the opposite of what we want, then we're going to want to also find the opposite. Same thing on both sides. K to positive one half. Let's try as it shows up. Number seventeen. That one true. See if that's a challenge or it's not a challenge. So we have a, a C here. We want to know what C is. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's happening to C. It's, it's getting multiplied by 5 thirds. It's also getting made the opposite, and it's being subtracted from 7. Uh, and then we know the result. So if you, if you had the number that is C, you could plug it in there. Multiply by 5 thirds, right? That would become first in the order of operations that we're adhering to. Um, and multiply by negative. And then add 7, right? Add 7 to that, that negative thing. Um, so when we approach uh, solving equations, a lot of times a helpful thing to do is to go opposite, opposite the order of operations. So as we try to get at the, uh, the variable, if there's anything that's being added or subtracted to the variable or a multiple of the variable, then we'll try and cancel that out first. So what's the first thing that we can do? Subtract seven. Subtract seven. From both sides. From both sides. Because seven minus seven is zero, and now we'll have zero minus five thirds C. And we're going to have to write down to zero. Just a negative 5 thirds C on this side. And 15 on this side. 
Again, we want to know what C is, but we don't know what C is. But we do know that 5 thirds times C uh, is, well, the opposite of 5 thirds times C is 15. So we could do this all in one step, or we could just say, well, if the opposite of 5 thirds C is 15, then 5 thirds C must be negative 15. That just stands to reason. And it also, we can do it mathematically by multiplying both sides by negative 1. <laughs> that way that side's positive, the right side's negative. So now we know that 5 thirds of C is negative 15. We know that if we were to multiply C by 5, take that and divide it by 3, we would get negative 15. So how would we get the inverse of that multiplied <coughs> by 5 and divided by 3? Multiply by 3 fifths. Multiply by 3 fifths, that means multiply by 3 and divide by 5. It's just the inverse of what's happening to C here. What we get is 15 over 15, 15 over 15 times C. On this side we have to do the same thing, 3 fifths. Do that if we want, 15 over 1. Cancel the 5 with a factor of 5 there, we get a negative 3. So 15 fifteenths of C, or 1 over 1 times C, is equal to negative 9. I go okay? Any questions about that? Now you see I got that when I did it in my head, but when I did it by hand, I didn't get that. That's a tough one, because, yeah, there's a way that seems intuitive, or the way that it is intuitive. We can just look at it, and we can reason through it and get the answer. But there comes a point when the problems are complicated enough, that intuitive way of going about it is just too involved, okay? Except for the very, very rare person uh, you really need to get a process down, practice it, be comfortable with it on paper so that you can apply the same line of thinking to more and more complicated problems. So, yeah, it's possible. It, it wouldn't be too hard to get this one in your head, but at some point it gets to be too much to track and you're going to lose something. And if it's not now, it'll be in calculus, and so it's worth your time to start now uh, when the problems are a little more simple uh, and have this, uh, this practice down. All right. Um, So it's at a point like this where I get conflicted between, um, I guess I could put it like this, two different people could follow the same steps um, but be motivated by different things and I encourage one person and I discourage the other person. Does that make sense? A little bit? Okay. If you memorize these steps as if there's some prescribed way to do every problem that's like this problem that you have to follow or else you'll get it wrong, uh, that's what I would discourage. If you're just approaching the problem and you, you do several of these kinds of problems and you're using reasoning and then eventually you get to a set of steps that's exactly the same as this other person, but you got to it on your own um, and just through recognizing a pattern, then that's good. But when you try to shortcut that learning piece, uh, well, you lose. And actually, 
I have, I didn't exactly plan this, but I do have a video from a guy that I think is really funny. And that I might share his, his kind of opinion on this. So this is him on uh, Conan. I'll play that for you. And maybe I won't. And I'll also hook up the speakers. people to just teach us things, but we wanted to, here's a weird idea, create knowledge. Can you create knowledge? Maybe not about where Tom Petty is from, but maybe how to solve this equation with some simple basics. We can take an equation 
like this one and this equation over here, which is different. Right? It's got a different structure. How is this different from that one? Yes, okay. So it's powerful if that is, it does seem challenging to you, or at some point you will be challenged. It's powerful to sit there and try and decide what you could do. How, how do I handle that? How do I handle variables being on both sides? Right? And if that doesn't seem challenging to you, it'll be something. Okay? Something in the future will be a challenge. And rather than have a Google mentality, I'm going to have you struggle with it a little bit. I'm going to have you try it. I'm going to expect you to actually try it, not just sit there and wait until I come along and tell you. Okay? This is a big difference. Uh, let there be that time in between where you, you know you're going to know it. But do struggle with it in between because that's significant. Okay, it's kind of like that game we played uh, in one of the first days of class. Uh, to struggle with it and to figure it out and to be able to apply that to another situation that's much more powerful than just being told how to handle this situation. Does that make sense? Okay. Is that guy kind of funny? Yeah, it's an <coughs> interesting way to bring up that subject. Yeah, it's irritating when people just believe Google even when Google is wrong. Google could be wrong. It's true. But there will be a day when Google's not wrong, or to some equivalent in the future will be not wrong. Uh, and you can look it up, and it will just be right. And it will understand exactly the question you're asking, and it will find it in you know, a split second, and you'll know. You'll have Google, but there won't be any point of like, remembering anything, because you'll have a chip in your head, and you'll just ah, we'll never have you'll think of it. You'll just think of the question, and then the answer will come to you, and you'll just know it. And what's the difference between that and your brain knowing? Lots of people would sign up for that, I'm sure. They would love to have Google in their brain and just think of it. I mean, they're putting Google on their face. You see Google Glass. Put Google right on your glasses. And it can take pictures and your emails can come up right here and you can read them. And it's just crazy. It's just more and more in our face. It's really on our faces. Okay. So let's, if we know how to do this, maybe we figured it out, maybe we were told, maybe we don't even know where we got it. But uh, let's do that. Let's solve it. If not, let's give an attempt at solving it. Uh, and then we'll come together and see what we've come up with. Um, but we do know what we want is to say at the end, x, or c, or whatever. In that case, x. We want to say at the end, x equals something. Okay. We don't want to know what it is. We want to know what x is. x is a number, not x is something else with x in it. That's kind of the piece of purpose. No x, I have to know what x is. That's what x is. Okay, so give it a shot, hook them around, maybe you're done, but maybe you're done. Well, it looks like most of us have got it. Okay. This isn't the challenging subject, but at some point it will be. Um, okay. So, <laughs> what do we do about having a variable on both sides? Okay. Um, now, I probably will use that terminology as well because I've just been used to it. But are we moving anything? Move stuff? Think about this. Think about the scale. You know, if I had two x over here, can you move it over there? You can't take something and move it, right? And then I don't need to pick on that choice of words or anything. But our choice of words is important, and, and when we think about it, uh, it can make us evaluate like the core of what we know. What we so, but I see what you're, you're saying, like, but you're. So we're, not, we're not moving it. No, it, that seems to make sense. Like we move that to that side. Um, what does it look like then? If we're moving it, what does it look like? What do we think? What do we do to that? So we'll subtract this amount here, right? Okay. What do we do over here? We do the same thing over here. We add the opposite. 
the, yeah, the opposites, right? They cancel each other out. Or if we're looking at a scale, if we're imagining a scale, there's maybe like on one side, there's there's things that are for sure, like that's a one, that's together, those two right there. But then there's this bag we can't see inside, and and that's an X, right? And here's an X over here. And what's it look like to subtract an X from this side? Pick it up. Pick it up and you take it away, right? But now it's unbalanced. So we also take away an X from over here. And now, well, we've done something. Obviously, what I just had. What equation did I just have up there? This 2x? This just represents a, a 1. 2 plus x. 2 plus x is equal to what? X. Could 2x be equal to 2 plus x be equal to x? No. A number plus 2 equal to itself without adding anything? No. It doesn't make any sense. So maybe if I were to like that, duplicate it. I have two of them, and I could work. I, I could take an X from there, move it out of there, at the same time move an X off of this side, subtract an X from there. That's the same. Now what's in here must be equal to what you see there, too. Okay. So we're doing in our equations. So that was, that was 2 plus X equals 2X. We're doing. So from both sides, we subtract the equivalent thing. We take two mystery x's from that side, two mystery x's from this side. We're left with four of those plus seven units equals, equals 59. <coughs> okay. So four times our number plus seven more is equal to 59. So what do we do? Subtract seven. We're in a familiar place here. 4x equals 52. Then 4 times the number that we want is 52. So we'll divide this. We'll make this 1 fourth of what it is currently. We'll get x is 32. That seemed to go pretty well, so we'll move on from there. Okay, once you give that a try, just for a minute. We're starting to really see some diverging 
answers here. Um, Mm. That's why we're seeing a different answer. Because I wrote 55, the number, and then I wrote down the problem for 35. Which I think would be the only other person actually did 55. But, so I'll just put um, here's where some learning happens. You didn't get negative seven. Go back and see where you possibly could have. What step could have taken you away from that? So if you're stuck at any point, the best advice I can give you is to try something you know works. I think there comes a point when you try something that you <coughs> think maybe works. Okay, Maybe try that at the, at the very end. But to, if there's something you know you could do that makes even a little bit of sense, try that thing. Okay. So it's something that we could do see here. No is something mathematically legal to do. Distribute. Okay. You distribute these things? Sure. Will it turn out to be the best thing? Who knows? But it is something that's possible to do. It doesn't violate any rules at all. We, distribute. we have a distributive law. 3m minus 15. Do we have to distribute on both sides? Is that an on both sides thing that you have to do? No, we're not changing the value of this side, are we? So we don't have to do the same thing to both sides, right? I guess we could, we could change the rule to change the value of both sides in the same way. Okay. But we haven't changed the value. But we will go ahead and distribute it. But it's not because we have to do the same thing on both sides. What if you couldn't distribute? Well, here's kind of the cool thing about the knowledge that we create. If we were to do 10 or so problems like this one, and we start to recognize, oh, they're, they're very similar to each other. There's a variable on either side. I know that I can subtract uh, some of the variables from one side, cancel them out completely on one side, uh, and then subtract the same from the other side, uh, and proceed from there. And then we have this problem, and all we did was distribute, and it becomes exactly the same thing. right? So it at least looks like another problem and we think maybe we can approach it that way. So what do we do here? Start calling it. An 
net. What did you do next? I subtracted six m from the right side. Okay. Is this something that everybody did? <laughs> you subtracted three m. Yeah. Okay. Um, is one more right than the other? <coughs> is one going to result in maybe one fewer step? Potentially. Possibly. Um, would you argue for any advantage of subtracting six or any advantage of subtracting three? Subtracted three because it's still positive. And so there you go. There, in, in this way, three m minus six m is negative three m. Minus fifteen. And we've canceled out six m. That's good. If we were to have done it the other way, we would have a positive three on the right side. Right. But it's not that one way is right or one way is wrong. It's just two different ways. Okay. All right, so we, we're there now. We only have variables on one side. That's a good deal. So what do we do next? Yeah. Add 15 to the other side. Good, because negative 15 plus 15 is 0. And so when we're adding 0, we're really doing nothing. 6 plus 15, negative 3m equals 21. And then we divide by negative 3. And we get m is negative 7. What would have been different about having subtracted 3m instead of 6m? How would that have changed like this step? Okay. Say it again. Yeah, right. So it wouldn't be a negative 3m. It would be a positive 3m. And this side would have been negative. And you might think that I'm like belaboring this point. But at some point, you're going to think, I did mine differently. I got the same answer. Is that OK? And usually, yes. Usually, you did probably something to the equivalent of subtracting 6m where I would choose to subtract 3m. Okay? Don't let that change the way you do things. Just say, oh, I see what you did there. I did something different. That's, you know, I'm going to do my thing. Or I like his thing more. I'll do that. Don't think that what I do, what somebody else does, is the right thing and yours is inferior somehow.
Something that we can do. Step we could take. Anthony? What's that? Simplified the rations. Simplify them how? <coughs> do we write them as decimals? Mm -hmm. Okay. If I address this early on, I think I did. If if they're giving us fractions. Say fractions, particularly just because like there's two thirds, and then 0.67. So if you came out something that was probably close to close to negative three, but not, it's probably because of something like that. But the ideas are the same. We already turned them into decimals. We still do the same kinds of things. We just do them in fractions. So let's say you you turn them into decimals. What did you do? And we'll just leave a fraction. What did you do after that? Um. <coughs> uh, I don't know how this year is going to work because there's going to be a Oh, okay. <coughs> well, so you did turn them into decimals. What would you, what do you think you would do then? The thing I would do with I would do is I would subtract one half on the right side to negative four on the side. So subtract this half, like a, a half, like the number half, not, yeah. not half x. Okay, so we'll subtract a half. Half. Okay, so we still have one half x. Oh, so okay, four minus a half. Three and a half. Okay, or even better. We talked about this improper fractions and mixed fractions and how only one of them is actually useful. That would be improper fractions. So what's three and a half in it in an improper fraction? Seven six. Seven what? Seven six. Seven halves. Seven halves. Because three, three is, if you got all three of those into half, you'd have six, six halves, right? And one more half is seven halves. Negative two thirds x. Well, that's pretty good. 
This looks like a side where variables exist alone. So maybe we can take advantage of that, or what? What, what do you think? What should we do? Well, something we could do. Okay, subtract one half x. And so if I'm thinking a step ahead, I'm thinking I won't have any variables over here. I'll only have variables over here. It seems like a good thing to do. So subtract a half x. Subtract a half x. Okay, well, then we have negative 2 thirds x minus 1 half x. How do we handle that? We have two thirds x minus one half x. <coughs> and what, what if we had five x minus three x? What would we have? Two x. Just a, you know, this is just an aside here, just to think about combining like terms. We have two x, right? We have they're both x's, so we know we combine them, and we know we get a new coefficient. How do we get the new coefficient? Four. This is a coefficient. The number multiplied by the variable is a coefficient. How do we combine the coefficients? Hmm? So they're alike? The, yeah, the, like the x's are alike? Or the numbers are alike? Never mind. Oh, I just meant which, which things are alike? Numbers. We know that they're similar. They're similar terms, they're like terms. So we've got they're both x's, they're both x's to the first power. So how do we arrive at 2x? It's easier than maybe it sounds. 5 minus 3 equals 2 and 5x minus 3x equals 2x. Yeah, but 5 minus 3 is 2. Uh, 5 of something minus 3 of the same kind of thing is 2 of that thing. Right? Uh, we keep the variable and we subtract the coefficients. Which means that what we're doing up here, we must need to take negative two thirds minus one half. How do we take negative two thirds minus one half? Common denominator. So what would be the common denominator? Six. Six. Okay. How many sixths do we have here? Four. Okay. Negative four six. Because we multiply this by two and this by two. Okay. Negative four six x minus how many sixths here? Three, Three sixths. We get seven halves equals negative seven sixths x. We want to do the inverse of a negative seven sixths. What's the inverse of multiplying by negative seven sixths? Negative six sevenths. We multiply this by negative six sevenths. Oh, we get a positive. We get uh, 42, 42 over 42, and that'll be 1. Over here, we'll multiply by negative 6 sevenths. This 7 can cancel with this 7. This 2 can cancel with this 6, leaving a 3. Negative 3.
Thank you. 